Wow, that was a weird dream. It was like something out of an old movie or something. <laughs> Speaking of old, did you know that mead is one of the oldest alcoholic beverages known to mankind, if not the oldest? The earliest archaeological evidence of the production of mead was found around, uh, was about 7,000 BC. And they found remnants of alcoholic beverages in 9,000 year old pottery jars uh, in the Neolithic village of Jaihu in Henan province in northern China. That's old. But hey, before we get started, do me a favor, click that like button, click the subscribe button if you haven't already, and don't forget to hit that bell notification. You'll get notified every time I upload another video. So, in the meantime, let's go make some meat. Hey everybody, I'm Dave Hodgkins. Welcome back to another episode of Hanging with Hodge. So today we are doing our traditional mead. Uh, but before we get going, come for the mead, stay for the archaic knowledge. <laughs> so we're gonna be making a traditional mead today. Uh, back when I taught some physical classes, uh, one of the things that I always taught was know the basics, do them well. So this is going to be a basic mead. And for what we have here, we've got a brew bucket. We've got a gallon of spring water. We have our honey warming up in uh, a bucket of hot water. That's gonna make it easier to pour into our brew bucket. Now we've got our lid with a, an airlock that's filled with star sand water. Uh, that way there will keep the bugs out. We have our hydrometer, our handy dandy hydrometer and our graduated cylinder. That's right, it made it through high school. Excellent. Uh, now we also have a couple, and that's really, oh, and we have our yeast that is rehydrating right now. Really, those are the components that you need for making meat. Water, honey, yeast. You can let it go just with that, and it'll take longer, it will ferment, and it'll come out good, but it will take a lot longer. We're going to give it a little bit of help. So we have uh, dimonium phosphate that we're going to add in as a nutrient. Uh, there are other nutrients that you can use, Fermate O, Fermate K, um, yeast hulls. Uh, so there are other nutrients out there that you can use. Um, or as I said, you can not use any of it. It's just gonna take a lot longer for it to finish the fermentation process. Uh, we're going to use our hydrometer to figure out what our uh, starting gravity is or our original gravity and then we'll subtract off our final gravity reading and that way there that will tell us uh, what our alcohol content is or the ABV. So uh, we have, and that's alcohol by volume. Uh, we also have our uh, wine thief or a uh, turkey baster that we'll use to uh, fill up the graduated cylinder to take that reading. Uh, additionally, we have a cup of black tea. And all that's going to do is that that's not going to add any flavor to it, but it is going to help add some tannins to the mead. You could use raisins to help with some tannins. It, it would get some in there. Uh, it would also add a little bit of flavor. The raisins would add some flavor in there. Uh, they're really not... Uh, for nutrients. Uh, early in my, when I first started making it, I thought it added, and it doesn't. Um, and then before we started everything here, we sanitized everything. We sanitized the entire area here, sprayed it all down um, with some sanitizer, uh, some star sand sanitizer water. And everything here was also soaked in a bucket back here uh, that has sanitizer water in it as well. So everything is well sanitized in advance. But basically our process for making a gallon of mead. We're going to add in one gallon of water into our brew bucket. I like to allow it to glug in, if you will. We want to get as much oxygen in there as we can. In primary fermentation, in primary fermentation, 
it will need oxygen. When we move it into secondary fermentation, which we'll have another video on later, uh, we don't want any additional air getting in at that given point. Now, we will go ahead and add in our honey. So as you saw, I've got the Kirkland honey that I use. Uh, right now it's going, which is, you get from uh, uh, Costco. Uh, it's wildflower honey. It's 100% honey, that's it. The, it's been sitting in a bath of hot water now uh, for about 20 minutes. If I can get this open, there we go. There we go. And we are going to add in Normally it calls for three pounds. I'm gonna go a little bit more. So we've got a scale here. Get a scale out. Turn that on. Right here. out. I'm just going to add in about three, three and a half to four pounds worth. There we go. Four pounds. Most recipes call for three. I like to add a little bit extra in. We're gonna take our, uh, I've got a slotted spatula that I use. It's over here. I've got a slotted spatula that I use for mixing with. And I'm gonna add in our tea. And then, I said, mix it well. And I'm trying to get as much oxygen in there as I can at the same time. We can actually get rid of this. And then next, we're going to take our reading get everything mixed in well. The other thing, when you warm up the honey, it allows it to mix much easier as well. All right, now. All we we'll do here. For all of the equipment that you'll need, check out my video on uh, the equipment that's needed for beginners. And we're just going to fill this up. Now, you don't want to fill it to the top because obviously as you put the hydrometer in, it's going to take up some of that space. And I always give it a spin as I put it in. So this way here, if there's any bubbles on it, uh, we want a true reading here. And then also check out my video uh, back on my channel in regards to how to calculate ABV. That was a fun video to make. We're at 1.110. And I want to go That's going to be good. Now the yeast that I'm using is a is called Lalvin D47. It's actually my first time using that yeast. So based on that gravity reading, we'll, we should end up with an alcohol content of about 14.5%. Uh, so again, check out the video. Uh, we'll also have some links uh, in up above here somewhere, uh, but also uh, in the description below, there'll be links to those videos as well. So 
Now we're just going to go ahead and pitch our yeast, which is just putting our rehydrated yeast into our bucket. We're going to give it another good stir. Now, the, you don't have to rehydrate your yeast. I have always done it that way, uh, but I know some really good mead makers and they do not rehydrate their yeast. They just pitch it right in on the top. That works as well. I've just done it this way for the past few years since I started making mead. And there are some really good mead channels out there. Uh, you definitely want to check out the other channels that are out there as well. Uh, one of the ones I was just watching him and he, he went over, I like the way that he went over a bunch of the mistakes that he had made making this. So check out Jordan at uh, Arrow to the Mead. Uh, his most recent video that talked about the mistakes that he made in making a mead, I thought it was really good. So we're going to add the dimonium phosphate here. So we've got a one gallon batch So it states that uh, one, to, one and a half to th or one half to three quarters grams uh, per gallon or one half to three quarters teaspoons per five gallons. So I'm only doing a one gallon batch, so I'm not even doing a full uh, quarter of a teaspoon. We'll add that in there and that's just going to give it additional nutrients so that it will finish fermenting faster and get through primary faster. Now at this point here, we're going to go ahead and put our lid on. So when you're using the bucket, make sure that you put the lid uh, with the airlock away from the handle. Because if you've got it over here, you're going to run into problems when you don't want to lift it. So we're just going to seal this down here. Here we go. We take our wet erase marker. I'm going to write on the side here the uh, original gravity, the date, the mead that we're making, and the original gravity. We'll also write it down in our notebook that we're going to keep track of each reading that we do along the way. And with that, that is how you make a traditional mead. This is going to ferment for about, primary fermentation should last probably about 30 days. Then we're going to uh, rack it off to a glass carboy. It'll go into secondary fermentation for probably about another 30 days. Once we see that the all fermentation has stopped and you do that by taking readings, don't rely just on whether you're getting bubbles out of here or not because if you just rely on whether you have bubbles coming out of there or not, you could end up making bottle bombs. That's a bad thing. <laughs> so uh, go back to Jordan's video uh, and you'll see one explode. <laughs> you don't want that. So make sure to take your readings and then you'll know whether or not your fermentation has stopped when it gets to the point that it doesn't change. You take a reading and it goes a couple weeks and then you take another reading and it hasn't changed then at that point there you're done. You can choose to uh, add additional uh, chemicals to make sure that it doesn't restart fermenting. Uh, you can back sweeten. Uh, you'd want to make sure that you add additional uh, chemicals before you back sweeten though uh, to make sure that fermentation does not start back up or use uh, a sweetener that does not ferment. That would work as well. Uh, but for uh, us right now, that's the basics of doing your mead. It's simple. Give it a try. Uh, I'm sure you're going to enjoy it. It's a great hobby. I've been doing it a couple of years now uh, and uh, I've been having a blast with it. And the community of YouTube mead makers out there, they are wonderful. Uh, check out all the different channels that are out there on how other people make mead as well. I make mead my way. You make mead your way. Till next time, I'm Dave Hodgkins. Thanks for hanging with Hodge.